Okay, in this video we're looking at the reflection of a point or a line along another line. So here AB, this blue line, is being reflected on this line L. And when we reflect this line on L, we get this gray line here. And it's a, just an exact reflection of AB. And, but you might notice that it's turned a little bit. It's, it's just reflected on this line. So notice A becomes A prime and B becomes B prime. All that means is that um, B prime, this little dash, right, like a prime number, that's how we say it, B prime, is the reflection of B. And A prime is the reflection of A. It just helps us um, understand which point is mapping onto which other point. So here A is mapping onto this point, B is mapping onto this point. And it's rotating on this line L. Now this this little applet is from Math Open Reference, great rep website, and we can even play around with it, right? We can change the nature of the line, and that changes the nature of the reflection itself. Um, we can drag this around as well. And notice, if I move A closer to the line, its reflection also moves closer, right? Up just until they actually sit right on top of each other. And I can move it back as I move it further away from the line, its reflection moves further away. And the same thing is true with B, right? As I move B closer to the line, B prime also goes closer. And I can move it around just to play with it. That's the basic idea. Um, I'm going to make a new slide here. So when we're, we're playing around with this, there's two kinds of reflections to think about. A reflection on the y-axis, which is what we just saw. And let's just take a point here, A. And when we reflect it on this line, I think of it as going towards the y-axis, whatever that distance is, I don't know, x. Well, let's call it A. Sorry. Distance A. Not D, distance. Whatever that distance is, but when I reflect it off the line, I'm going to go the same distance over here to make A prime. So a reflection on the y-axis just bounces right, this distance to a prime. Whereas a reflection on the, on the x-axis, same idea, it's just turned a little bit so that here's our x-axis. If I have a point B and I reflect it on the x-axis, I'm just looking at this distance right here. I don't know, so whatever that is, it's going to bounce off here the same distance. Right? And then when we reflect on the x-axis, we would get B prime. So if you notice, reflections on the x-axis are vertical, and reflections on the y-axis are horizontal. Right? We're bouncing off that line. And one thing to think about, let me just show a point. We don't, look at, we don't even have to look at a whole line. If I have my y and my x-axis together, let's say this is x and that's y. And here's a point, let's say, 2, 1. So this is this point, 2, 1. If I reflect it on the y-axis, where is it going to go? Well, it's got to go this distance right here to the y-axis, which is a distance of 2, right? So it also has to go 2 this way. And if I had drawn this accurately, you, you could see the perfect reflection, and it would be here. So again, it the point is 2, 1, it reflects off the y-axis, well, it's going to reflect the same distance right, off of the y-axis in the other direction, a distance of 2. So what is that distance, what is this new point going to be? Well, it's going to be negative 2, 1. And just one thing to notice about reflections on the y-axis, it's the x-value that's going to change. And I think that makes sense because our horizontal position is changing. So in general, if you have a point x, y, and you reflect it on the y-axis, what's going to happen is it's going to become negative x, y. So all it's going to, the y value is not changing here, just the x value is. And if you, if you look at it, um, let's say I'm starting at negative 1, 2. Let's say I'm starting up here. Negative 1, 2. Well, now I'm starting in the, the second quadrant. I'm reflecting on the y-axis. I'm going to go this way. It's going to be a distance of 1 here, and so it's going to reflect 1 this way to this point, and that point is going to be 1, 2. And this formula still works, right? The reflection 
a reflection on the y-axis is represented by negative xy. So now our formula still works because here we're starting with a negative 1 and that becomes positive 1, right? And in our formula here, if I take negative 1, oops, different color, negative 1, 2, and I reflect it on the y-axis, I have to take the negative x, a negative of the x value, and keep the y value. So it becomes 2 and negative negative 1, which is negative times negative 1, which is positive 1. And that works. So reflection on the, on the y-axis, a simple way of talking about it is just to, to flop the x value to its opposite and keep the y value. That's a reflection on the y-axis. And a reflection on the x-axis, same idea, except we're going to flop the y value. And let's look at why that makes sense. So here, let's say we have this point, I don't know, let's, let's use the same point, 2, 1. So right here. So now, again, my y-axis is up here. Here's my x-axis. If I reflect along the x-axis, what's going to happen? This is going to become 2, and then this distance right here, negative 1. So there it is. 2, negative 1. And all I'm doing for this is taking the y value and s switching it to its opposite and keeping the x value. And you might see it written as this. On a reflection of the x-axis, keep the x and f swap the y to its negative. So if we start with 2, 1, it goes to 2, negative 1. If I start with 2, negative 1, it goes to 2, positive 1. So when you see reflection of the x-axis, don't just rush and s switch the x. Think about what it means to reflect off an axis. Here's the x-axis. So to reflect this point, I'm going to bounce off the x-axis and come down here. And then you can see that it's the y-value that's changing, not the x. All right, hope that helped.